the victory. That's why I was now telling Esau. He said, I've seen your face like I see the face of an angel. And now you cannot hurt me. Nobody will be able to hurt you from tonight. Preservation, the preservation of saints through divine intervention. The Lord will intervene in your life in Jesus' name. In Psalm 34, Psalm 34, I'm reading from verse 9. Psalm 34, we're looking at verse 9. The Lord is coming into your life right now. He's changing everything changeable. Everything shakeable is being shaken out of your life right now. And by the time you leave here tonight, that thing has happened already. I say it has happened already. All the negative reports you've got before about your health and about your place of work and about your wife and about your husband. All those negative reports you've got about your children. Before you leave here tonight, it is changing already in Jesus' name. We're looking at you from Psalm 34 verse 9. It says, So fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them. There's no lack, there's no loss, there's no sorrow for them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord, I'm the one seeking the Lord tonight. I said, I'm the one seeking the Lord tonight, and there's this assurance for you and for me, that they that seek the Lord shall not lack, shall not want, shall not lose any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life? Anybody desiring life here tonight? Abundant life here tonight, sufficient life here tonight, long life here to eternal life here tonight. Is this what man is see that desires life and love it and love it and love it and love it? How I many do you love many days? You'll have them in Jesus' name. He says, and loveth many days that he, he may see good. Keep thy tongue from evil. And thy, and thy leaves from speaking up, depart from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue, and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord upon the righteous, thank God his eyes upon you. I said his eyes upon you and his ears are open unto their cry. Tonight, all your cries the Lord will hear. All your prayers the Lord will hear. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Anybody trying to do evil against your life, the face of the Lord will be against them in Jesus' name. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, the righteous pray, the righteous, and they talk to God. And the Lord heareth and, and he delivers them out of how many troubles? How many troubles? How many troubles? All your troubles you are delivered. The Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart and save as such as of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. It has happened already in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 37, Psalm 37, I'm reading from verse 28, because of divine intervention. That's how God comes to intervene for you. That's why he is mine. Devil cannot touch you again. He is mine. The evil spirits cannot touch you anymore. He is mine. Esau, with his 400 men, cannot touch you anymore. He is mine. Because of that, all those paths of darkness will not be able to touch you anymore in Jesus' name. Psalm 37, verse 28, for the Lord loveth judgment. And forsaketh not his sins, they are preserved forever. You are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart, and none of his steps shall slide. The wicked watches the righteous and is seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Thou shalt see it. Thou shalt see it. The Lord will be with you. In the day, in the night, everywhere you are, wonderful protection secured protection 
in 2 Timothy chapter 4, in verse 17, it says, Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. The Lord stood with me. If the Lord is standing by you and standing with you, what else do you need? What else do you need? Maybe some men forsake you as to their laws, but the Lord is going to stand by you. And then it says, And strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known. And then it says, That all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. You are delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. In the night and in the day, the Lord will deliver you from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I come to number three now, prosperity. Everybody say prosperity. prosperity. All losses are taken away from your life. Every lack is taken away from your life. Living from hand to mouth that is taken away in Jesus' name. You'll be head, you'll not be tail. There'll be promotion, there'll not be demotion. There'll be success, there'll not be failure. There'll be victory, there'll not be defeat. We're looking at Genesis chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 11. Genesis chapter 33. We're looking at verse 11. Take, I pray thee, my, breath, my blessing that, that, that is brought to thee because God has dealt graciously with me and because I have enough and because I have enough and because I have enough and because don't confess anything negative anywhere you go you wake up in the morning praise the lord this is the day the lord has made i rejoice and be glad in because today i have you know you get to the place of work and they say they are retrenching people and then you say praise the lord i'm not among the least they are retrenching because today i have enough and then they said you know there is epidemic and this is happening and that is happening and everybody is dying this one dying this way a thousand shall fall by thy side and ten thousand by the left hand side then you say praise the lord because today i have enough you're going to the market and then they say do you know that you know customers are no more coming because of the price of this and price of that and this one has gone up and this one and the customers are no more coming and then you are spreading all your wares you are going to say you say praise the lord i'm going to sell this today i'm going to sell that today i'm going to sell that today because today i have enough they say we don't know what is happening nobody is you know getting pregnant in this street in this community maybe some wicked people are there they said as long as they're living there in that street nobody is going to get pregnant you say my wife get ready i said wife get ready because today I have enough. The Lord will open the way for you every day of your life. In Jesus' name. Hey, let's come to Jacob, your senior brother here. I said Jacob is your senior brother here. Because as everything was changed in his life, everything is going to be changed for the better in your life. He says, take, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought to thee, because God has dealt wonderfully, graciously with me, and because I have enough. Anybody there? I said, anybody there? I, can't, I didn't hear, I only see hands. I only see you. I said, say it with your mouth. I have enough. You'll have enough in Jesus' name. I want to interview Jacob for a moment. I want to say, how did you come to that point? Show me the way. Show me the way. How did you come to the point you have enough? And Jacob said, I will tell you. Let him tell us now how you came to have enough. If you do what he did, you are going to have enough. I said you are going to have enough. Look at Genesis chapter 28. This is what he did. This is what brought him to have enough. We're told in Genesis chapter 28. And I'm reading there from verse 20. Genesis 28 verse 20. And Jacob vowed a vow. That time he had nothing. That time he had no wife. That time he had no child. And Jacob vowed a vow. That time he had no piece of land. And Jacob vowed a vow. That time he didn't have any flock. And Jacob vowed a vow. He had nothing in his son. And when he was at the place of having nothing, no wife, no children, no land, no house, nothing at all. Only one stick he had. He was going all alone. He had no companion. He had no friend. But Jacob vouched a vow. 
saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on. He wasn't even sure at that time of raiment to put on. He wasn't sure at that time of any food he will eat. He said, but if the Lord will be with me while I'm going on this journey and then God will give me food and God will give me clothes to wear so that I come again to my father's house in peace then shall the Lord be my God. That's what he did. He said, the Lord will be my God. The Lord will be my God. And so make up your mind and say, the Lord will be my God. He will be my healer. He will be my provider. He will be my redeemer. He will be my deliverer. He will be my protector. He will be in front of me. He will be at my back. He will surround me. Underneath me will be the everlasting arms. When I get into trouble, the Lord will be my God. When there's no friend, the Lord will be my God. When all things surround me and I'm confused, the Lord will be my God. On Sunday, I'm going to wake up and go to church because the Lord will be my God. From Monday, I'm going to attend Bible so the Lord will be my God. And when anything happens, I'm going to be thinking about my God, my God, the Lord will be my God. If you make up your mind, that's how Jacob did it. Then they came to a point, he said, I have enough. Because from the moment, from the day I made the Lord my God, everything turned around in my life. Everything will turn around in your life in Jesus' name. He said, I'm not looking at what I have now, what I don't have, if God will go with me. And then he'll bring me back to my father's house. This God will be my God. In verse 22, and this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. He said, it's not only that the Lord will be my God, I'm going to build God and habitation. That thing the Lord is going to provide for me. And this place will be God's house. And then he said, and of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the taste unto thee. The two things there, number one, three things actually, number one, this God will be my God. You see your God? I said, you see your God? A father which art in heaven. I look be thy name. Thy kingdom come. When that kingdom comes in your heart, because except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. When you enter into that kingdom and Jesus becomes your savior and the Holy Ghost your comforter and this God of heaven becomes your heavenly father, that's the first step. And thank God for those who have taken that step. And if you have not taken that step yet tonight, this God will be your God. I said this God will be your God. He didn't take Jacob time. He just said, God, you are now my God. God, you are now my God. You are my creator. You have become my savior. You have become my Lord. You become my, Lord, my redeemer. And when you make up your mind, Jesus Christ died for me. He shared his blood for me. And from now on, Satan will not be my Lord. From now on, evil speech will not be my Lord. From now on, occultism will not be my Lord. From now on, all those Jews will not be my God. But Jesus is now my savior. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. I give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. This God. God will be my Lord. You have taken the first step. Welcome, welcome into the kingdom. And when you enter the kingdom like that, something else is taking place. Then he said, this stone will be God's house. This, what does that mean? Look at Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. You're making up your mind. I'm going to do something. I'm going to provide an habitation for the Lord my God. Look at this in Exodus chapter 15. And we're looking at verse of the Lord is my strength. Give me a good amen. Yeah. And it's my song. Another amen. Yeah. He has become my salvation. He is my God. I will prepare him an habitation. He is my God. I will prepare him an habitation. That means that you make your house the house of God. And whatever we cannot do in the house of God, you're not doing that place. Say, this is the house of God. That's what Jacob said. Jacob said, this place where I find myself, it will be God's house. I'm going to make God an habitation. He said, God has become my salvation. He is my God. I will prepare him and habitation. Let me show you one man. This is how the blessing comes. In 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 6. 2 Samuel chapter 6, and I'm reading there from verse 10. This is how you have the blessings of God, the abundance of God. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 10. It says in verse 10, so David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David, but David carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. 
That's the ark of the Lord that represented the presence of God for the children of Israel. And David took that ark to the house of Obed-Edom. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. You see why God blessed Jacob? Because he said, this place, or because house, you have a house, you have some city room there, some uh, thing, and we can make that a church, there can be a church there, where the presence of God is every Sunday and every Monday and every Thursday, and say, this place, the house where I live, this place, the, where I, the place I reside, this place, the place I lay my head on, is also going to be God's house, it's going to be God's habitation. It will, be, it will happen in Jesus' name. They are telling our leaders to say, I'm surrendered like Obed Edom. I'm surrendering my house to be the house of God. I'm surrendering my yard to be the habitation of God. I'm surrendering my city to be the habitation of God. I'm telling you the blessings the Lord is going to bring upon your life. You will not be able to continue in Jesus' name. Overflowing. Overflowing. Abundance. It will run over. In your life in Jesus' name. And look at look at Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 3. It says, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks. Unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles likewise greet the church that is in their house. That's how people become blessed because they do like Jacob. They said, This place where I live will be God's habitation and God's house. Number one, this God will be my God. This God is your God. I said, This God is your God. Number two, your house becomes the house of the house of. The house of, that will be the house of prayer. It will be the house of preaching. It will be the house of miracles and wonders. It will be the house of revival in Jesus' name. Number three, Jacob said, of all that you give me, I'm going to give a tense unto thee. Wonderful. I'm going to give a tense unto that man knew how to have the blessings of God, abundance of God. Inside. That's why I have sufficiency and prosperity because of divine investments. Investments. We're looking at Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. And I'm reading there from verse 10. Malachi chapter 3. We're looking at verse 10. This is how you are going to have the abundance. It is coming. I said it is coming. Look at verse 10 of Malachi chapter 3. Bring ye all the tithes into, into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now, here we says the Lord of hosts. Who is talking here? I said who is talking here? Who is he talking to? Who is he talking to? Praise the Lord. You are the blessed person the Lord is talking to. You are the prospering person the Lord is talking to. You are the protected person the Lord is talking to. You are the man, the woman of abundance. The Lord is talking to tonight. Let me read it to you. Look at verse 10. Verse 10, he says, and probe me now. Here will say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. The windows of heaven, they are going to be open. And pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. That's the word enough, begin enough. You'll have enough, you'll have more than enough. You'll have more than enough. And then in verse 11, it says, And I will rebuild the devourer for your sins, and he shall not devour, he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of us, and all the nations of the earth, and all the nations shall call you blessed. All the nations shall call you Let's personalize it now. All the nations shall call me blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. And this is your portion. Deuteronomy chapter 28, it was Jacob's turn, now it is your turn. I said, now it is your turn. And shall come to pass, Deuteronomy chapter 28, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all the commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God, whose God is this God? I said, whose God is this God? The Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee. 
and overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, blessed shalt thou be in the city. Blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Are you tired? I said, blessed you'll be in the city. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in. And blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way. And they shall flee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, in all that thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways, all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. And they shall be afraid of thee. Did I hear an amen there? And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, and in the land which the Lord thy God swear unto thee to give unto thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure the heaven to give rain unto thy land in his season and to bless 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 all the works of thy hand and thou shalt learn unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow and the Lord shall make thee the hedge the hedge the hedge and not the tail and thou shalt be above only. Where are they? I said, where are they? Sit you down. I said, where are they? You'll be the head. You'll not be the tail. Then say, you'll be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath. If thou shalt hearken unto them, unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Your blessing has begun. I said, your blessing has begun. Why don't you just praise the Lord? Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. No sickness will stay in your body. No calamity will stay in your home. No oppression will stay on your children. No poverty, no lack, no loss. Because today, today, the Lord is calling you to a covenant. A covenant of grace, a covenant of mercy, a covenant of provision. A covenant of supply, of sufficiency. Congrats, congratulations, because the Lord is calling you into his abundance today. This God will be my God. This God will be my God. This God will be my God. Make your promise and make your vow before the Lord. This God will be my God. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, and everybody said the joy of the Lord is in your heart right now. Your doors are opened. The gates are opened. Floods of miracle. Floods of healing. Floods of provision. Come into your life and your family right now. Let's bow and eyes close. Let's bow and eyes close. Put out your hands. Thank you very much. God bless you. You've got it already. Let's bow and eyes close. This God will be your God. And if for the very first time in your life you're saying this God will be my God, I'm turning away from myself. I'm giving my life to the Lord Jesus Christ so that Jesus will be my Savior. He'll be inside me. He'll be around me. He'll be before me. He'll be behind me. He'll surround me. And nothing will be able to touch me from the enemy camp. And you say, now this God 
will be my God and you are saying from the depths of your heart that Jesus Christ died for you to take away your sin and then it becomes your savior tonight wherever you are just raise up your hand I have a special prayer for you thank you very much thank you very much I'm waiting for you that you're saying this God will be my God this God will be my God no more idol worship, no more sinning, no more adultery, no more fornication, no more drunkenness, no more smoking. This God will be my God. Where are you with that hand at me if you're serious about that? Keep the hand up and just close your eyes and pray a special prayer for you now. This God will be my God. Can we say that to a them? Ah, say it to a them. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for all the people who have raised up their hands and they say, this God will be my God. I pray, Lord, be their God tonight in Jesus' name. I pray that all the sins they're leaving behind will not attach itself again unto them anymore. You separate them from their sin and you separate their sins from them and you cleanse them, you forgive them, you wash them, you totally take everything away from them in Jesus' name. The condemnation of their sin, take it away. Oh Lord, I pray that forgiveness and mercy and grace and love will come into the earth right now in Jesus' name. Give them, Lord, the assurance that now they are saved. Let the Spirit of the Lord bear witness in the earth right now. Their sins are taken away in Jesus' name. And give them victory. Give them victory. Give them victory over all their past sins in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray the joy of salvation and the peace that comes with salvation and the victory that comes with salvation will come to them right now confirm each and every one of them lord we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray amen angels rejoice in heaven when sinners come to the lord if you will rejoice like angels you do something different Amen. Ah, I'm sure you think that is the limit of the joy of the angels. You think that is the limit of the joy of the angels. Rejoice with them. Rejoice with them. Rejoice with them. Amen. Now. I said now. Now, now. Praise the Lord. Tears wiped away. Yeah. Sorrow taken away. Yeah. Regrets taken away. Yeah. All problems taken away. Yeah. Sicknesses taken away. Yeah. Afflictions taken away. Yeah. Bad luck taken away. Yeah. Poverty taken away. Yeah. We're praying now. We're praying now. Catch it now. Catch it now. It's mine. As I catch it now, it is yours. Father, in the name of Jesus. We just want to praise you, we want to glorify you, we want to exalt you, we want to celebrate you. Lord Jesus, how wonderful you are, how marvelous you are. We thank you, Lord, because you have opened the door and you have opened the floodgates for all the people of God who are here now and those who are hearing my voice. Oh, Lord, I pray, breakthrough, abundance, great supply. Unto everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray any sickness there, from the top of the head to the lowest patch in the foot. Oh Lord, I pray, take it away in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes, I command you, be opened in Jesus' name. Those dim eyes in Jesus' name, be cleared in Jesus' name. Those deaf ears, I pray the Lord will touch the ears right now. And I pray those deaf ears will be opened in Jesus' name. Anything swelling in the swelling in the stomach, swelling on the neck, swelling at the back, I command all that swelling and of my near to you, get out in Jesus' name. Kidneys that are not functioning, come alive in Jesus' name. Leavers that are not functioning. Come alive in Jesus' name. In the, your spiritual system, your lungs that are not working, I pray that the Lord right now will touch you. Receive your miracle in Jesus' name. 
any pain, any infirmity, any kind of sickness in your body from the top to the bottom, I pray the Lord will touch you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. As you are going out of this place tonight, no sickness will follow you. No infirmity will follow you. No pain will follow you. All that have suffered until this time, I pray right now, it will be cut off from you in Jesus' name. And for those who have people in the hospital, a father, a mother, a wife, a child, a husband, that you have in the hospital, as you are thinking about them right now, I send the power of the Lord after them. Lord, I pray on that hospital bed, instantaneously, miraculously, touch them, heal them in Jesus' name. And those who have anybody in a mental institution, they are insane. And they have mental problem. I pray now, Lord, send your power right there. And I pray you deliver them from that mental institution in Jesus' name. And those who have any loved one behind the bars in the prison, Lord, I pray, get them out of that place. Give them their freedom in Jesus' name. Lord, I just pray that all the blessings your people need to shower upon your people. Poverty, I command you, get out of their lives in Jesus' name. Those who are jobless, I pray, this very month, your job will come to you. Poverty will live your life. Prosperity has come. Abundant supply has come. Lord, I pray for those who have been looking up to you. They want to get married. They say this and they say, and it's never possible. This is a year of multiple marriages in this church in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that those who have not been able to make it, this year they will make it. And those who have married and then for one reason or the other, there's not be any children, miracle babies. Are you right there? I command right now. I have your miracle baby in Jesus' name. And my sister right there, I command. Have your miracle baby in Jesus' name. Our students who are here, there's no failure this year. There's no failure this year. There's no failure this year. You will be the head, you will not be the tail in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, as your people go out, let blessings run after them. Let miracles run after them. Let deliverances run after them. All the paths of darkness clear away before them in Jesus' name. You turn to the right, blessing. You turn to the left, blessing. You go forward, blessing. Everywhere you move around, blessing. And I pray that when that celebration day comes, you will celebrate. You will celebrate. You will celebrate. And your testimony will lead other people into miracles. Oh Lord, I just pray as your people go now, your miracle power is following after everybody. Let the joy of the Lord be the strength of everyone. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, and the people of God said, finally the people of God said, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray the miracle we read about tonight will be transferred to every life. The joy, jubilation we hear of tonight will come to every life. Here, at the Kurudu Alpha location, everyone, everyone, Lagos State, all the states of Nigeria, all the countries of Africa, America, Asia, Australia, Canada, everywhere, Europe, in the Caribbean, everywhere, Lord, I pray, put a smile on every face. And I pray in the Gulf, I pray in the Arab world, everywhere. I pray, Lord, tonight, dynamic miracle. Spectacular miracle. 
that you turn every life around tonight in Jesus' name. Confirmation upon your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Tell the person by your side before you sit down, there will be a smile on your face. How do you say that? You say that and then your face is, you know, plastic. Put a smile on your face and tell them the Lord will put a smile on your face. It is done. I said it is done. God has blessed you. He'll bless you more. You can sit down. Tonight, I come to a story. An important story in the Acts of the Apostles. When you hear the Acts of the Apostles, actually, it's the Acts of Christ by the Holy Spirit through the Apostles. But because of not having a long, long sentence over the book, that's why it's just called briefly the Acts of the Apostles, the Acts of Christ. What he began to do, what he continued to do is the power of the Holy Ghost through the Apostles. And that Holy Ghost, as we have sung by the guest minister, is here tonight. Amen. And Christ is here tonight. Amen. And the power will flow to you. Amen. Will get to you. Amen. You might discover that while the message is going on, your blind eyes are open. Amen. You may discover that while the message is going on, you're feeling the urge you are being paralyzed and lame. And you're feeling the urge, get up. Even before the prayer, that power will operate in your life. Yeah. And of course, when we come to the final, amen. To my right, to my left, to my right, in front of me, far at the back, and online. I'll be talking to you. I'll be touching your life. And you will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 3. Look at verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Being the ninth hour. And then in verse 2 it says, And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the temple at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask arms of them that entered into the temple look at verse 3 who see Peter and John about to go into the temple asked and arms, and then in verse 4, and Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, Look on us as we look on the Lord tonight, something great, unforgettable will happen in your life. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, and he gave heed unto them, expecting, expecting expecting to receive something of them. In verse 6, the Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Verse 7, and he took him by the right hand. He took him by the right hand. The man, you know, he had never walked. He was lame from his mother's womb. And when Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one that went about doing good, 
healing all that were oppressed from the devil. But now he died for our sin. He was buried. On the third day, he rose again and is gone to heaven in the name of that Jesus. Rise up and walk. And the man was dazed, confused. I'm looking for money. I'm asking you to give me arms. And you are telling me, rise up and walk. I'd never done that. So Peter did not waste time. He took him by the right hand. And he lifted him up. And immediately, somebody shout immediately. His feet and ankle bones received strength. Your lame legs, paralyzed hands, withered hands, and your backbone that is broken, paralysis from the neck to the feet, the strength of the Lord will come. A creative miracle will take place in your body, in your life today. He receives strength. And then in verse 8, we're told, and he leaping up, stood, and he walked, and he entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. You will praise God tonight. Amen. You will rejoice tonight. Amen. Miracle will meet you when you are there tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, and all the people saw him walking. I will see you walking. I will see your blind eyes open. I will see that cancer and that swelling. I will see it removed out of your body tonight in Jesus' name. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Now, how did that happen? Look at verse 16. In verse 16, and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. Faith, expectation, trust, confidence in Christ will make you strong tonight. Will make you saved tonight. Will make you delivered tonight. That whom ye see and know, yea, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Giving him this perfect soundness. Perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Tonight, I come to talk to you on perfect soundness through the preeminent emancipator. The preeminent emancipator. The king of kings. The lord of lords. The god of all power. And is preeminent over your problem. Over the attacks. Over the affliction. Over every bad condition in your life. The preeminent emancipator will deliver you tonight. You will smile. I will smile. Perfect soundness through the preeminent emancipator. I've read the story to you. I'm not going to go over the story so that you will know you are in the picture. You know, sometimes when a photograph is taken, I see Peter in the photograph. I see John in the photograph. I see the man that was born lame in the photograph. You are asking me, Pastor, am I in the photograph? Yes. Are you in the photograph? I'll show you where you are. As Peter and John in the photograph, as they manifested the power of God and the man also who had never walked, he stood up straight. He said, make way for me. I'm in the photograph. I make way for you tonight. You're in the photograph. 
Three things we're looking at. Number one, the condition of lameness from the womb. The condition, that's the way he was born. The condition of lameness from the womb. Number two, our confidence in the Lord for his wonders. Our confidence in the Lord for his wonders. Number three, the confirmation of liberation through his word. The confirmation, the confirmation of your own liberation, of your own emancipation, of your own salvation, of your own healing, of your own deliverance through the word. The word will come to you tonight. And the word that comes to you tonight will set you free. He will liberate you. He will break every chain, every shackle in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Number one, number one, number one, the condition of lameness from the womb. I read it to you already, but let me just look at, uh, you know, some verses there. Acts chapter 3 verse 2. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb. A certain man lame from his mother's womb. How does that resonate with you? How does that appear to you? What has been our condition from the womb? Lame, impotent, incapacitated, unable to do, unable to stand, unable to walk, unable to be upright, unable to straighten up from the womb. Let me show you how that applies to you and to everyone. We're looking at Psalm 58 verse 3. In Psalm 58 verse 3, the wicked are estranged from the womb. The physical man, the natural man, born lame. And he couldn't stand from the womb. But that is how our spirit, our inner man, our inner personality, that's how we are. From the womb, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray, they wobble, they cannot stand right morally. They wobble, they cannot stand right spiritually. They try to get up, they cannot be upright because the wicked, they are strange from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, as soon as they are born, speaking lies. I'm sure you know that. That a child does not have to get to school and learn and be trained to tell lies that was from the womb. And it's an indication that everyone that is born into the world could not stand upright, speak straight, stand straight, behave well from the womb. I want you to look at Psalm 51. I'm reading from verse 4. Psalm 51 verse 4, against thee, the only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judges. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, behold, I was shapen in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. David said, although I'm king now. David said, although I'm high up now. David said, although I'm rated as high in the most important country in the world at that time. He said, from the womb had been wobbling. I couldn't walk straight. I couldn't act straight. I couldn't do anything straight. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 8. 
Isaiah chapter 48, verse 8. Yea, thou heardest not. Yea, thou knewest not. Yea, from the time that thine ear was not opened. For I knew that thou wouldest deal treacherously and was called a transgressor from the womb. A transgressor from the womb. That's how we were. Like that man at the beautiful gate. Lame, impotent, paralyzed, incapacitated, not having any backbone to stand. And we couldn't stand. And any little thing we went into transgression. That from the womb. And that man felt he will remain like that until he died. Actually, at this time now, he was already 40 years of age. You know what people say? They say, a fool at 40 is a fool forever. God says no. For you, I say God says no. Yeah. A paralytic at 40, paralytic forever. God says no. Yeah. I didn't hear you. Yeah. Helpless and hopeless at 40, helpless and hopeless forever. God says no. Yeah. Now whatever your condition, you're 20, you're 15, you're 17, you're 40, you're 45, you're 60, you're 70, you're 80, and you're even beyond that. That bad condition will not continue forever. Yeah. Today, tonight, is the time of total turning around. Yeah. Look at the person before you and say, tonight is my night of turning around. Yeah. Tell them, tell them, show them. Tonight, tell them tonight is my night, my very own night of turning around. And every bad thing that had been and followed you here, all those things will clear up tonight in Jesus' name. I'm coming to point number two now. Point number two, our confidence in the Lord for his wonders. Our confidence in the Lord. For his wonders. Your night of wonder has come. That man. That was at the gate. He saw Peter. He saw John. And he thought. They will be like all the other people. Give me pennies there. Give me some saints there. Give me something. That will help me. Because I'm hungry. And then the church. And the church there. And said. Look on us. Christ. Had given them power. And Christ had said. Go ye into all the world. And preach the gospel to every creature. He had said. Whoever you lay your hands on. They will recover. And that whatsoever you ask in my name. That I will do. And so they said, look on us. And then we are told in Acts chapter 3, reading from verse 6, Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Oh, the man almost said, eh, go your way, please. Don't, don't stay. But before he had a chance to talk, Peter then said, but such as I have. If I told you tonight, as I came, God gave me something to transfer to you. Yeah. That's something from heaven. A gift from heaven. Grace from heaven. Power from heaven. For you. Where are you? I'm smiling because I know you will smile. And so Peter said, Such as I have, give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
Rise up and walk. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, and he took him by the hand. Our counselors there. Our ushers there. Not only here, in every congregation. As we pronounce the word, the word of Christ, that brings the wonder of Christ. You know, uh, the person there is lame. Maybe he is coming for the first time. He has never heard what God has been doing for the people. And you are there like Peter did and stretched forth his right hand and lifted him up. As you ushers, counselors, as you do that, you find the strength is there already. The power is there already. You know, a person who had been blind and did not see anything before, he doesn't know where to look, but you the counselor, you the usher, you are the one to say the word has been proclaimed. And that final amen has been said. Now, you point them to the, look at that, look at that. Then you say, yes, I can see. They will see tonight. <laughs> Somebody had been deaf, dumb. They don't know any word. They don't know papa, mama. They don't know I. They don't know me. They don't know anybody, anything, any word. But as we pray the prayer, I will mention the name of Jesus. And you know, counselor, that the name of Jesus can never fail. You are the one to get near them and say, say what I say. And you say, Papa. And for the first time, they're hearing that word, Papa. God has healed them. Now, when, when you were born to this world, you didn't, you were not dumb, you were not deaf, but you didn't know Papa until Mama said, that's Papa. And then you said Papa. And then somebody else said, that is so and so. And then you said the same thing. When God heals people, they don't know what to say, but you will say Papa, they will say Papa tonight. Yeah. You will say Mama, they will say Mama tonight. Yeah. Now, 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 when the little child comes to this world and never heard any word, and you say, Papa, he'll say that, that. And then the mother will shout for joy. My child has started speaking. But you know, counselor, if you say, Papa, and you say, da, da, and you say, oh, it's not like that. You destroy their faith. But if you say, praise the Lord, he has started speaking. And then the right word will come out. Yeah. And when you say one, you say, ah. Uh. You say one, you say, ah. Uh. You not say, ah, uh ah, -uh, no miracle. He has not got it. He has got it. Yeah. I said tonight, he has got it. Yeah. He started speaking, and then uh, whatever is the challenge there, it is you, the counselor, that will encourage their faith. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Look at verse 8. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising tonight, wonders in our midst. That wonder is very close to you by your side there. And when we pray and mention the name of Jesus, and you say amen, and I say amen, and the whole congregation say amen, if two of us shall agree as touching anything, Heavenly Father, He will do it. Yeah. Wonders tonight. Yeah. Number one, the wonders of salvation. The wonders of salvation. Tonight, salvation is around. It's available. And that salvation is the transformation and the change of your life. Number two is the wonder of recreation. That 
everything that is deformed in your body, deformed in your life, there is a recreation tonight. That leg, like bow legs, that is so bent, you don't like the way it is. Recreation tonight. That leg that is shorter than the other, and you are wondering, look at me.